Hello everyone, this is Zelx here and if you're a newbie who just recently joined Shadowverse or just a veteran that doesn't know what temporary decks we are getting and what value they can provide for your account don't worry, that's what this vo video is for in this video, I will be breaking down each of the decks and the value of each card and also the, what playstyle you should be expecting and what sort of upgrades you can make to the deck and uh, I'll give also give my thoughts on like the temporary deck strengths and of course uh, if I say anything wrong or if I miss anything do feel free to let everyone know in the comments down below just if you have anything uh, interesting to say feel free spread the spread your knowledge for the betterment of everyone but yes all of that aside let's quickly get started into with what we were planning to do today Right, first uh, that we have right here on the screen in front of you is Natural Dragoncraft. Natural Dragoncraft, immediately I look through the deck and I see some very good legendaries that you could have gotten for a dragon. Uh, but first, before that, I think I will talk about what this deck expects to play like. So, the main win condition of this deck is actually Valdain, Bound Shadow. If you don't know what this card is, uh, do, f do search it up now. I or now nah, I won't be putting it up on the screen because I don't have time to edit this. So this will be a raw video. But basically what Valdain does is that he gives you a spell that basically nerfs your opponent at the end of every single turn of your turn by minus 3 defense if 5 or more Nataran World Trees have left play. Which is what most of the cards in the front half here on the cheaper side do. Namely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I believe Motley Alliance also do it. So all of these cards generate world trees, which helps uh, uh, helps fewer boundings uh, token spell. And then also we have uh, some ram tools inside here, water worm, Irma, as well as dragon oracle to help you get to play more trees earlier. Overcoming power also helps you uh, summon more trees, and he also destroys the enemy follower for defense. So. This deck is kind of a more controlly combo deck. No, not really a combo deck actually. How should I put it? It is control you control your opponent, but you have decent amount of store and burst. Because Baldin also gets stormed once 10 Netheran Great Tree has left play. And some of your followers down here or cards down here also get buffed the more Netheran Great Trees you play. So, in terms of card value, the first one I'll talk about first is Irma. Irma is actually a RAM follower, which means uh, she already has decent value in most dragon decks. Uh, in big dragon, maybe not buff dragon, but you could theoretically run her in buff dragon, although most of the time you are not. But big dragon or any dragon deck that want, likes RAM will usually want Irma. Next card, Drag Dragon Oracle is a basic card, everyone has it. But Water Worms, let's say, is also another ram card that is pretty good for, well, most dragon decks. You'll run it in a lot of dragon decks, which is why Water Worms, let's say, is also a very good card to get from this contemporary deck. But unfortunately, other than these two cards that I mentioned, all the rest are under natural support. So if you were to choose this deck and natural Dragon Craft did not turn out to be as good as you think it is, then you are going to have a very difficult time pivoting to another deck with your limited resources. Uh, however, there is one card that you, is very versatile here. It's actually a Desert Wanderer. I forgot that it's actually a neutral card. But that is also a card that is very useful in other natural decks. Not just natural dragon. Then, other than that, Celestial Dragon New is also a very strong card. Especially in natural, maybe not so in other dragon decks. Unless you can find a dragon deck that also relies on, they can get a decent board and have can have many followers. You get destroyed on the turn you play Crystal Shard Dragon Dude. In which case, you could find a place for Crystal Shard Dragon Dude as well. A Terminus, Dra Terminus Dragon here is also a very decent card. It's actually it's probably uh, also a very, it can slot into a lot of dragon decks. Basically, he just discounts two followers in your hand by one. And it's that's really good actually. So it's very good honestly, and it even gets stormed once you're in overflow. But yes, so what sort of, then now I'll talk about what sort of upgrades you can make to this deck. Uh first upgrade that I can immediately take off, three copies of Valdain. This is your win condition. You want to make sure you can get this 
as often as possible as soon as possible. Maybe also get more copies of Desert Wanderer. He summons Netheran World Trees, which are free draw and also fewer Valdain and your other wing conditions. Uh, I will cut Sacred Wing Fish. This is obviously a song for the worst, but I feel like that's if with more copies of Valdain, you don't really need Sacred Wing Fish. And also add more Netheran Peace. Netheran Peace also generate more World Trees for you. Add more Crystal Shard Dragon New in the future. Maybe you could. Consider cutting Irma. I don't think Ramp is too essential for this deck. And if poss I'm also thinking of cutting Netheran Defender. Uh, in my opinion, this card isn't as good, but do take this with a huge grain of salt. I'm recording this before the expansion went live. So who knows? Everything could change. I could be wrong. Netheran Defender could be an amazing card. It, I mean, it is also a Storm Follower, which you can pair with Valdain. Yeah, that is, that is pretty good. But th that's really up to your discretion. And do... And if you are not sure what to do, uh, then just wait until either me or some other content creators have uploaded a video on Natural Dragon Crown. Actually, just wait for Igni. He'll probably play this first. But yes, that's basically it for Natural Dragon Crown. In terms of value, I don't think it's as good. But in terms of power level, it could be there. It's missing a little something right now. But this deck list specifically, but I think once you build a full list, this could be a very well fully fleshed out deck. I can definitely see this winning you games by around turn 7 or turn 8. Uh, if you can get Valdain out on your first evolve turn, going, um, let's see, first on turn 5, you can get minus 6 a defense on your opponent's leader or even minus 7, minus 9, and then just you need like 11 damage for lethal reach, which is, you know what, it seems pretty consistent to me. Maybe... Maybe not so because actually you it will be very consistent because you have a ton of draw from your Netherian World Tree. So you would probably not have a problem winning with this deck if you do go for it. But yes, once again, if you're not sure, please wait for us to make the videos first. Next up, Makina Shadowcraft. Makina Shadowcraft, okay. First look, let's look at some of the valuable cards. Actually, though. No. What am I doing? I should keep this consistent. I'll talk about how to play this deck first. Uh so looking at the deck is based. I think it's very obvious this is going for a very tempo-ish deck or a mid-range style. Uh, you have Entrance Skeleton, which actually can I? No, I cannot. But Entrance Skeleton is a one mana last word with... I forgot what's the last word actually. You know what? I think I have it here somewhere. Give me a year. Shadow is a shadow card, right? One mana... Do you want to the enemy leader? So it's quite, quite an offensive too. Uh, self fire strike is also very offensive. Runes of Idolon, Idolon, a uh, tutor, someone of Makina followers could be Hoverboard, could be Nicola, could be Ania. Slash this in style gives you more stats on any follower you have played. Idarius help you draw, and then Mecha Soul Soul Strider is a storm follower. Share go draws two cards, reduce them to zero. Which in this that's case only uh, Ania Hoverboard Slayer of the deck. The, no, it's not, not Slayer of the deck. Nicola, of which you know what it gives you a lot of value. So you can see how this push for a more aggressive deck. And also there's also Zombo Droid which reduces himself every time you play a Makina card. So Runes of Iolon and the card that you get from it, uh, Recovery. And then there's also uh, cards from Ania. And all the Assembly Droids you get from friends anywhere. And also all the other Makina cards that you already know about. So let's take a look at some of the legendaries that you can get from this. First up, Technolo Origin. This is a 9 mana card boss win condition. Basically, what it does is on fanfare, it does it splits damage amongst all enemies equals to the number of allied mech of machina cards you play this game. So assembly droids, recoveries, runes of Iolon, Ania, everything counts. But do know it is played and not and not like summon. So if you have summon cards from Ania's uh something joy, yeah, that would that won't count towards Techno Lord. But I think more often than not, you will be using it for the accelerate one, which is a three mana one mana do three draw a card, which is really good. And you need you do need to have three machinas in your hand to use it, but I think that's really easy to achieve. 
Other good cards you got here is Zabat. Zabat is really strong in mid range shadow, even in last words as well as a source of heal, source of damage, source of board removal. She is very versatile, and if you play her for enhanced eight, she could be a as a ward follower. Also recovers you play point, no, not play points, evolve points, which could help you go further into the late game. Other one, Goddess of Compassion, going second. This is really strong as a ram card. You can use it to fuse away one uh, card that you don't really need and you can ramp. Or if you can fuse two uh, different card, neutral or spell cards. And this becomes Goddess of Condemnation, which heals 5, increase your max hit point by 5. Bring you out of little reach of most decks. So, um, that is really good. And the last one is Ania, Amethyst Creator. This is a Machina card, so you only can only run this in Machina decks. I don't think... Actually, you could potentially run this outside in a Shadow deck because it does generate two Shadows. So, because she summons something else and she also draws a card, replaces herself, so there is a potential for you to play her there. But overall, looking at this deck, I feel like... It's okay, it's decent, it's coming together, but some changes I will make. I'll talk about the upgrade options first. Uh, tech, three copies of Techno Lord, three copies of Ania. Uh, I might cut Corners of Compassion. To me, ramping doesn't seem necessary. And if you're going to go for... You're, you probably won't survive to Techno Lord. Uh, turn even if you play for uh, Goddess of uh, Condemnation, which is a shame. Mecha Soul Soul Strider doesn't actually uh isn't a cheap follower as well. Honestly, I might I'm considering swapping him out for something else. Maybe more uh, maybe just cut him completely so runes of Iolon will guarantee either uh Hoverbot Beatster, Nicola or Ania instead of potentially drawing you a Mecha Soul Soul Strider. But then again, who knows? Uh Another card that I might be consider adding in is actually the who's the the shepherd if you the necro shepherd Lubel, I think that that card could actually see play in this deck. Uh, let's see what will I replace. I will replace Entrance Skeleton. I will replace Let's Feast in Style with three copies of a Tem as well. Two copies of a Tem actually. Two copies of a Tem. Three copies of Lubel. The reason why is Lubel is actually a Shadowcraft legendary that can put two play point cards into your followers into your hand, which could give you Ania, Hoverboard, Slate, actually all, all the all the cards down here. And including assembly droids as well, which you could also play to uh further fuel techno law origin. Which I think is a lot better than Zabet, although Zabet does give you heal, which uh, funnily enough, Lubel also gives you heal as well. So you know there's even less reason to run Zabet. And if you're worried about evil point recovery, don't worry, friends anywhere can also recover you evolve points. Another card that maybe I consider cutting is actually Slays of the Deck, but this one will have to look at how consistent this deck draws and well how mid-range tempo-y this deck could be. After all, if you can get if you can get I think the main goal of this deck is to get Ania's uh e fan fair effect active on by turn 5, so that means you will have to play at least 8. At least eight uh, Machina cards before turn five, two cards on turn two Machina on turn five into a uh, Ania, and that will be her effect active, and I think that will be very strong. And also Zombo Droid will definitely help with that because he spell boosts himself. You might just need to find a little bit draw in most scenarios. Which I think Night Terrors actually supplement quite uh, quite well. So you know what? Machina Shadow might be a thing, but and the value of this deck is okay, it's decent. Technolog Origin can be run in most Machina decks. Uh, Zabat can be run in a lot of Shadow decks. Ania, okay, also in Shadow decks. Cordless Confirmation in a lot of decks as well. So definitely va the value for this deck is really high. Uh, as even if you, you don't play Machina Shadow for Machina Shadow, you do get a decent amount of good cards. Hellfire Strike, Play of the Day as well as Night Terrors are also all very good cards by them if, and by, this, by themselves. So yes, do if you're looking for pure value, do keep an eye on Machina Shadow. Just from the value of some of the cards. You get two net neutrals after all. But in terms of strength, meta strength, uh, I'm not sure. This is obviously very um let's see, mid-range. Is it mid-range or is it aggro oriented? I think it's actually more mid-range oriented because you your early you don't really have a lot of strongly stat up followers, you're just doing small cheap damages throughout the game. 
fight for board, maintain value, and then finally finish the game off with a bad Techno Lord Origin or my recommended way with Lubel and Attempt. That's that's what I think you should be playing, how you should be playing Machina Shadowcraft. But hey, wait for us to test it out before you do anything. You do anything with your temporary decks. And then last one, we have Rough Blood. Is this in frame? It is in frame, but I can't pull it up any longer. So you guys are going to have to deal with it for now, unfortunately. So basically, what Rough Blood is very interesting. The deck, deck list, Rough is really easy to play. You literally just need to ping yourself in the face seven times. And right here, off the start, in the left side, you already see that you have a lot of pings. Harmonic, Wolf, Fear, Disciple, Weapon, tra Weapon Trainer, Demon of the Keys. Actually, I, did I mention what cards you can pivot to from Machina Shadow? I did, I don't believe I said so. So you know what, I'll talk about that real quick. Um, With this current deck, you can pivot to not a lot of things actually. Zerbat can be used in uh, some form of aggress aggressive last word or even some control decks. Hellfire Strike is in an aggressive deck, you could use that. Enhanced Skeleton is pretty good generally. Slayer of the deck is also good in aggro decks as well as some control decks. But the rest of the cards aren't as important. Then, okay, let's move finally move on to Rough Blood. Rough Blood, okay, the first thing is first, Harmonic, Fierce, Deviable, Weapon, Tamer, Silver Snipe, Demon of the Key, Stamps of the Cups, Dice, Devil, How to Train Your Bat. All of these are really, really good Rough Enablers, and they even see play outside of Rough decks because of how good they are. Elena is here because she can get you Urias, which is a very strong Rough Wing condition as well. Diablos is also a strong Rough Wing condition. Asura well, Curie is a draw 2, heal 2 if you're going second. But if you're going first, she's significantly worse. Mastima is considered a bad card, but she's still okay. Vampire Groupier is really good. Enchanting Resperting, not as much. Garnet Rondo, not as much. Group Canverte is good for Ra. Cautic Chimera is good for Ra. So in terms of value, what is the most valuable card here? Elena. Elena is really valuable. And I forgot how I'm supposed to structure this again. So I'm going to restructure immediately. So the main idea of how you want to play Rough is definitely simple. You play all of these cheap cards to ping yourself for 7. And once Rough is active, all of your cards become super strong. Uh, there are also cards that uh, reduce reduce damage dealt to your leader on your turn to 0. Like cards from like Urias, cards like Rogue and Verte. These cards will help keep you healthy despite all your constant self pings from all your followers. Garnet Rondo is like three that three mana due four to the enemy leader and four to your enemy bot as well, so that's a decent card. And yes, that's basically so rough blood. You want to play very aggressive, aggressively play all your followers. It's definitely a lot more aggressive than Machina Shadow, and I think a lot more fun to play. You are also playing with fire a little bit because you're lowering your health hit points in exchange for a lot of payoff. Like cards that you very valuable cards here. And now I talk about the valuable cards. First up, legendaries, Elena. Neutral card, you'll probably is really good because she gives you a lot of options and you can slot her into a, literally any class. Except maybe Haven. You might not want to slot her into Haven, even though you have the option to. She's very versatile. She's very I think she can enable a lot of different shenanigans by bringing back all the original 8 heroes for each single class. So that is definitely a card you want to be on the lookout for. And then next one, Diablo Sidone is really good in not just rough blood, but also in uh, aggro vengeance blood, which is, a, I think it's still a deck because, yes, Galom and the gang is still in rotation. So that is still a thing you can do. So Diablo Sidone is a very strong 3 mana card that wipes the opponent's board, so you definitely have to look out for her. Rogue and Verte, as she, she's good, but mainly a rough only card, and so is Audit Chimera, rough only. So how do you how will you I go about upgrading this deck? First up, three copies of Elena, three copies of Diablo, three copies of Rogue Verte, two copies of Rogue Verte, three copies of two copies of Audit Chimera. Definitely get at least get Elena and Diablos first. These cards will are very important. Elena giving you Urias Diablo Sidone is a very strong board clear. Uh, cards you might want to consider cutting, maybe Temptress of the Cups, maybe not. Uh, she's okay after all. And also Asuka and Shuri, you don't really need a draw. And also consider cutting Mastima, Dark Temptress. She's not as good as uh, some of the other rough cards out there. And also maybe consider cutting uh Enchanting Raspberry if uh if you find it too bricky and also like reduce the amount of cards you can play uh remark re reduce the amount of garnet rondos you play because like one is very expensive 
and two, it is three, it's three, I mean, it's three mana deal for which you might want to use the, uh, you might have some better combos out there like what Diablo's into Cultic is twelve damage for six mana, but if you do Garnet Diablo is still ten damage actually that's still really good. I like maybe maybe like keep two copies of Garnet Rondo is not bad, not bad at all. But yes, that's basically rah blah out. And did I say how, what you can pivot this to? I you can pivot this to aggro rah blah. You can pivot Elena into necromancy shadow resonance artifact portal. You can. There's a lot of decks that you could run Elena is in. Is definitely a very high value card. So if you really want to look for value, definitely look at rah blah uh, over machina shadow because. Goddess of Compassion and Technolo Origin are more niche, but Elena is definitely like miles more versatile than, uh, than Machina Shadow right now. All the, the the neutrals that are provided in Machina Shadow right now, and in terms of valuable, how I judge this deck, this is definitely an aggro aggro ish deck. You definitely have to play a very aggressive with this. So, definitely depends on your, uh, play style and game choices. So, in terms of which deck, I would recommend new players to play. I think I'm gonna to have to go with Natural Dragoncraft for this one. Why? Rough Blood is really expensive. You already you will heard about what I mentioned already. Three copies of Elena, three copies of Diablos, two copies of Road Verte, two copies of Cultic Chimera at the very least. And that is already two, four, six legendaries you have to craft to finish this deck. But then I can definitely tell you that Rough Blood Craft is going to be very, very strong. Machina Shadowcraft on the other hand is still in a very iffy spot where I can't recommend it to anyone yet because I'm still in the mid process of figuring out like what how this deck will finish off games and how this deck will actually work. Although I do have a idea for it already, I don't think it's still a work in progress. So if unfortunately even though I said not to if if you really have to pick one deck, pick Natural Dragoncraft. I think it's the cheapest. Three copies of Valde. You don't even need Irma. You don't even need Terminus the Strago. You don't you may or may not even need Crystal Dragon. So this one only needs four legendaries to complete. And that is considered cheap in Shadowverse. And yes, that is basically it. My recommendations and my analysis of the temporary deck card list. If this uh, video has been of help to you, a new player or veteran uh, otherwise similarly or otherwise. Then yes, do leave a like, leave a subscribe for future Shadowverse videos. And I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye.